Deeply stuck of Chengo, how's the stuck of shake? A man said of trouble, another earthquake. It's only December, I repair the juba. Now all the dreams seem to shatter. Ceiling cracking, walls keep tumbling. And look, my door and window, they all break. Show you the power of this earthquake. Good evening, viewers, and welcome to Calypso Showcase. And the Lord Kitchener, the Grand Master, Alwyn Roberts, singing his Panel Quake, one of the more popular tunes for Panorama 1994, and the Trinidad All Stars, the Nina Massey Trinidad All Stars, playing the, verse and, the first verse and chorus of that tune, heralds the night show and gives us a cue as what we're going to be doing tonight, which in fact is analyzing the arrangement that Trinidad All Stars played. As you remember, Trinidad All-Stars placed a second in the 1994 panorama thanks to a fine arrangement by Eddie Qualis. And he's the ideal person to tell us about that arrangement tonight. Good evening, Eddie, and welcome Good to the Showcase. Good evening, Well, before we talk about that fantastic arrangement, let's talk a little bit about the man, Eddie Qualis. And you know, thumbing through some old LPs, I saw alto sax Eddie Qualis as one of the musicians on the LP. What instruments do you play? play the saxophone, keyboard, steel drum. Ah, the steel pan. The steel pan, National sorry. National instrument. Sorry, of sorry, yes, <laughs> <the> steel pan. <laughs> well, um, how, how did your musical career begin? Well, I started learning music at the age 11 in a place called St. Mary's Home, which is now Takarig Orphan Home. It just used to be Takarig Orphan Home. And started at 11 years, joined the police band at about 16 years, Play several instruments in there, learn to read and write and arrange music. Then I left Trinidad with, as a ranger with Lord Shorty Vibration International in the early 70s, late 70s, mid 70s. I think that's where I saw your name on a, on oh, a Endless possibly. Vibrations uh, yeah. record. Mm -hmm. And um, how did you come to play on um, some of these LPs? Um, how many people have you backed up for over the years? Well, as I was telling you before, I tried to make up a resume about two years ago. I took about three pages, 
and I couldn't finish the resume. <laughs> so yes, it's new master, but uh, too new master to call, you know. And I really take take note of it, but I can call some names if you know. Mm -hmm. Like I play with them. Um, as I mentioned before, Kitchener, as you know, um, Lord Shorty. A lot of records. Um, who else? Probably most of these people play in the back. Behind yeah. <laughs> so me. You, you know. Arranging. Mm -hmm. I have associated the name Eddie Collis with musical arrangement. Um, how, how did you get into arranging per se? Well, the first arrangement I could remember really doing was Fire Fire. I was about 12 years old. And when I joined the police band, I started arranging for Tambo. Tambo, that's well. I was his first arranger, actually, mm -hmm. when he, he joined the police band through my, my writing, right? Mm -hmm. And I started um, helping out the, the director by writing, arranging for Tambo, which was a small unit within the police band called the Mad Dog 8. Mm -hmm. Tambo and uh, uh, some other guys still in the police band belong to that group. And I started experimenting there. And when I went to America, pursued my studies, you know, continued studying and started arranging for other small guys. I think the first big name guy I arranged for was Possibly Muchan or Shadow. Muchan and Shadow I did one year. Yeah, but they're behind us. Yeah. <laughs> they, they but tell me something. <laughs> How did you actually get involved in uh, Pan and uh, Trinidad All Stars in particular? Oh, well, the Pan, I started actually playing the Pan in New York. I, wasn't, I didn't used to play Pan back in Trinidad. I used to play conventional, a little keyboard, a little piano, um, saxophone, flute, and different things, right? And I started playing the Pan by hustling, what you call hustling in New York, playing on little parties here and there. You know, somebody got a. Mm -hmm. um, brought me a tenor pan, a fifth pan, fifth style pan, and started practicing it and adapted the saxophone techniques towards it and so forth. We're going to talk a lot more about yeah. you and your association yeah. with pan and arranging yeah. skills. But what we want to do tonight is to go through this arrangement that you did for the Trinidad All-Stars for 1994. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to show our viewers the pre-edited video where mm -hmm. we talked about your arrangement of the tune Pan Quick for Trinidad All-Stars. We'll be back. Welcome back to Calypso Showcase, and in case you've just joined us, our special guest tonight is Eddie Qualis, the arranger for Trinidad All-Stars, who arranged the tune Pan Quake for the band this year that helped them to play second overall. And when one thinks that this was the highest score made by a band of the tune Pan Quake, which took some doing, we want to know what Eddie Qualis did to get this arrangement to work the way it did. And so we chatted with him about a week ago, and this is what Eddie had to say. Eddie, let's start by talking about your choice of tune for Panorama 1994. Why Kitchen's Earthquake? Well, Kitchener gave me my first break in Calypso in 1969, right? I was a teenager playing in that group. In the days of the acoustic instrument, like acoustic piano, acoustic bass, we had Martin Albino on bass, Arthur Carroll on piano. And um, I worked with him from 1969 to about 1975. So a lot of my background stemmed from Kitchener, as far as Calypso music is concerned. But well, what about the tune itself attracted you to it? Well, um, what attracted me to do Kitchener tune? Well, last year I did a Kitchener tune in New York, Mystery Band, for a um, steel band in New York, and they run second. And I enjoyed working with Kitchener tune. That was the first time I ever did it for Panorama. Mm -hmm. So last year you did dust in your face. I did dust in the face. face. But um, I didn't have a chance. I didn't do Kitchener yet, so I just was introduced to Kitchener and the band, that is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the band, Nina Massey Trinidad All Stars. What, are the, what is the composition of the instruments used by that band? Because I know it varies from steel band to steel band. What, what sort of instruments do you have to arrange for? Um, it's a pretty wide range, starting from the nine bass. They have a couple Which of is nine the lowest. Bass, the lowest. Mm -hmm. Then I have six bass, and then I have tenor bass, which is a, they have a good bit of tenor basses. The tenor basses are all chromed, or uh, some chrome, I believe chrome. Mm -hmm. Some of them they just start chroming them, but most right. of the pans are painted. Right. And going up in that order after tenor bass. Well, I starting from the lowest going, going up. up. Then I have the four pan, which are called the quads, which is a very useful pan, and then I have the triple guitars. Are those the ones that are high on the racks that you see up front, more or less the triple guitars? 
Uh, no, they, they don't, they should be get to stay um, on the ground almost. Mm -hmm. uh, also, I don't have any panda shoot up in the end. I think that's the only band that have those, those uh, style of panda shoot up like those pan up in the air. Mm -hmm. That's the only style. No, I'm, I'm talking about in terms of their location when set up on stage at Panorama Night. Are they at a sort of higher level than the front? Yeah, bands? that's there on a higher level here. Yeah. Right. And after the treble guitars, they have the treble cellos, a few of those, and then they start going up to the seconds. In terms of the difference between how you recognize the triple guitars and the triple cellos, what, are the, what is the difference in terms of the length of the pans? Oh, the length of the pan, the triple cellos are a whole pan, full size. Full length. Yeah. Right, and the triple guitars are cut in half. Right. And we go up to the double seconds, which will have about 15 of those, then the double tenors, mm -hmm. and the tenors, which are numerous. <laughs> what you have about, about 35, 40? About 30, 30 something, maybe. All right, <laughs> let's talk about now how you approach this tune. The first thing that struck me was the very first note played by the pan, as though that you had dropped into some sort of a void, and we heard this low rumble. How did you achieve that effect? We achieved that with um, drums, African drums, and the lower lower pans. And the lower bass pans. Lower bass and. How many African drums did you have? And describe them for us. Well, there were three big, huge African drums about that. Uh, high. Skin mm -hmm. drums, mm -hmm. you know, the skin ones, the big bass drums. So, you know? Yeah, but I think it uh, had the desired effect, the very first note, you know. Yeah. Like something was coming from a distance. Yeah. Well, that was the purpose of it, uh, mm -hmm. to create that effect. You know, the introduction of a panorama piece can either set up the audience for something that's coming good, or it can sort of turn off people. What did you do in terms of structuring your introduction? What exactly did you try to, and tell us musically what your introduction is about. Well, first of all, we, we always make a lot of changes. It seems that this, this band, All Stars, have a history of change, and every time we go up, so I just come in and I start to continue that tradition. That introduction that we heard final night wasn't there for semi-final. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, so we, we just decided to put more earthquake in it, actually, mm -hmm. because we had the musical earthquake, like for semi-final, we had an, a, a one chord, a sharp chord, bam, and it starts on. And as it's for the final now, we decided to make an earthquake more with the drums. A simulated earthquake. A simulated earthquake with the drums and the lower register at the, the uh, basses and stuff like that. <laughs> When we come back to the other part of the introduction, which was there from the semi-final, from the prelims, we started on the on that sharp chord, as I told you before, and we used a motif from the second half of the verse. Mm -hmm. We um, ba bam ba da ba ba da ba ba da. So we started ba bam ba dam bam bam. And then we move on to the Latin part in the intro too. Correct. Where the third was going to bam ba dam bam 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 ba dim bim bim. And then we move on after in the intro to the Part of the chorus. Mm -hmm. We play bam ba dam bam bam ba dam ba dam earthquake. Right. Bidi, 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 bidi. Now that was um that was about half a minute long. Yes. Yeah. A good introduction, if I may say so. Yeah, sounds a lot. <laughs> yeah. And um, and then you use the roll before you got into the, the into first the tune again, yeah. Yes, but yeah. I think you know throughout the tune you seem to be always reminding people by using that roll yeah. that you're playing with quick. Yeah, because that roll come at the end of the tune where mm -hmm. he sing. Right. He sing pam pa dam pam pam pa dam pa da roll. Right. Right. <laughs> and every now and again you keep bringing back that roll as that to role, remind yeah. us yeah. that the, the earthquake is is around. Yeah, <laughs> rolls and trills and sort sort of stuff like that, you know.
it has become the norm for the pan to play the first time around the verse and chorus unadulterated without much frill without much change what did you attempt to do the first time that you played the tune well i first of all i scored out the tune on a master score and i reharmonized the tune which which means that certain chords used on the record i will use other chords you know beside the basic chords i'll try to enhance it right and we came down the line and when we reached about the second 16 bars i start moving my background mm -hmm. with a, a nice catchy part you will hear it when he played along in terms of things like note value and following the singers um, some people again have said i might find a third verse of a of a tune more interesting as my first statement than the first verse. Do you specifically look for that, or do you just go with the first first verse and chorus as sung by the cantor? No, so what you say is Chris correct because I prove that time and time. Sometimes a person might sing a first verse with a certain phrase, and when we sing the third verse, he might get a little more excited and sing with a certain energy, mm -hmm. and sometimes it's got to capture that part, mm -hmm. you know, because. If you don't listen to the whole song, you might be losing out on something. Correct. So I listen to the whole song from top to bottom. Then when they first give me the kitchen a tape, and I score it out. So uh, as I go along, I keep listening to all the other verses and different things I might have in the record. And there are certain things therefore that you use at different yeah. times in the arrangement. Yeah, I use um, one of the horn line. Well, the band chorus horn line would have. Mm -hmm. da -dee 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 -dee. Well, I only use that once right. at the end of the song. Mm -hmm. Because I thought it necessary to use it there, I didn't had no use for it for the higher earlier up. part of it. Yeah, because the idea was flowing, you know, so I didn't have to use it. Once the initial statement is put down, again, this is fairly traditional, we, we tend to go into what we call a solo or a variation on the melodic line. And uh, some, most people use the, the front line tenors or double tenors to do that and try to transfer the melodic line into one of the lower pans. Yeah. What did you do? And the first developmental section? Yeah. Well, I didn't, I didn't think I did anything like that. Mm -hmm. I did something that I don't think I ever did it before in the first verse. As it's used as sort of a, a technique called elongation, um, where you expand the melody in a certain part, and it's, it seems as though you're going into something else, but the, the, the measure is still going along. We see the structure was still below there. Right. That's why I did it. So, so it's, I don't know how to describe it. Well, uh, well I, I must admit, yeah. I listened to it a few times, and I was mm -hmm. trying to understand what you were doing. Yeah. I didn't hear the melodic line in any particular pan. And it was almost like you started at the beginning of the verse and you finished at the end of the chorus. Oh, Although you joined okay. the, <laughs> the first half of the verse with the last part of the chorus. Yeah, I know it seemed to appear that way, but it have melodic. But the melodic line was somewhere in there. It's somewhere. The Maybe it yeah. wasn't there in the reproduction. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what pan would you have had it? I had it. Um, well, I had to listen back to this over again because since Panorama Night, I didn't really listen to this tape. Mm -hmm. eh? So, but um, it was there in the guitars. When the when the tenor start playing a line, pam pam pam, pada bam, pam pam, pam, and I make this run, and everybody come back. That the line was there underneath there with the guitars, and the tenors was doing something else. I see. But it was a technique called elongation, where you expand the phrases. The phrase mm -hmm. it might be like, for instance, the two the phrases two bars, and if a part like for, for instance the first bar is lapping over to the second bar, in the original statement, I might I might make it lap over, in a different part of the measure. Like if it's lapping over on the first, on the second bar in beat one, I might make it go on beat three in the second bar, as mm -hmm. like things like that.
And you know, the third time around, it seemed to me that you had got into a jam session very, very early in this piece. Because um, I got the impression, and you'll correct me if I'm wrong, that you went into something which was related to the Latin, um, let's say, the Latin influence in the piece, in the first mm -hmm. part of the chorus. And it sounded to me like a jam session ending up with a, a Latin type <laughs> of um, action, if you want to call it that. Yeah, I think I know the part they're talking about. That's on, in the development and section, the yes. only Latin part comes down again. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, we did something like that. Had the Latin going underneath and had the tennis doing something else. Well, that, uh, that was actually a part that I created. Right. This is a familiar Latin hook. This is what I'm saying, yeah. yes. So I put that in there and then, because he was only talking about Latin and earthquake. I mean, that's Correct. a key word. So I had parts of it with song like it was playing like a mambo. Uh -huh. A part song like we, we had a samba when he went to the first change of key. Mm -hmm. As we go along, you, you might hear it on the tape, you know? Yes. Here yeah, we went to the samba and different other Latin idioms we had there. Well, at this point, let's talk about the rhythm section and the, the entire percussion that you use with this band. What did you use and for what um, parts of the tune to bring out what effect? Okay, well, um, in the samba part, when you and the first change of key, I asked um, Coombs to lay off the, the timpanis and other stuff and just play the cowbell, which is a, a, a beat that I gave him, a samba beat, because that was giving us problem all the time with the engine room on that uh, samba part. And one day I was just walking along and I heard this beat, this samba beat, and I said, that should, that should do it. And he, he played that beat on the semi-final and final, it was successful. That as far as the samba part is concerned. And um, well, the earthquake part, we used the drums because the timpani wasn't um, loud enough. It wasn't giving you No, it wasn't it. giving us it, so we had to bring in those extra those drums. African so, drums. Yeah. <laughs> Keys did you use in this piece? Hmm. Uh, one, two, three, four, about five or six keys. Five or six yeah. keys, but some of the key changes are very, very subtle. Yes, Not some of them are very subtle and some might be deliberate, you know, like the first change of key. Yeah, well, that was yeah. very, um, up, you know, recognizable. Mm. One of the keys you used was a beautiful minor. What was the relevance of the minor to your entire arrangement? Oh, the minor. Yeah, the minor was a lot of fun. What we did with the minor, I, um, I composed a little 16 bar introduction to the minor, which was like, like more symphonic music, like more classical music. And actually, I composed that by itself. I was working around with that. I didn't, I didn't have the minor chorus yet. So we went in what they call a minor chorus, which um, I, I, I don't think I had ever heard anybody doing much of that. The minor, I don't normally do a minor verse. Right, like, yeah. you know, this was a minor chorus. And it was the same exact length as the chorus, doubled at the end with a part repeated. Now, if you check out the phrasing in that chorus, that minor chorus, it says the same thing like what Kitchen is singing. It's just I might, after four bars, I might go somewhere else right. and then come back to the statement again. I understand. But the yeah. melody was going down there in the minor chorus. It was a, a challenge for me to do, and mm -hmm. uh, I enjoyed doing that.
if I were to look at the earthquake concept, and I, as a, a layperson reacting to it, I got the impression you were giving us what I would call pre-shocks. Yeah. A big shock, yeah. and then aftershocks. Right, right. Is that correct? Yeah, that was Is the Is that the way that you approach this song? Yeah. yeah. That, that, that's what I had in mind, actually, as an earthquake, because it couldn't have just one um, so uh, earthquake, yeah. and it must have a little aftershock, so mm -hmm. something before the give you a hint that it will be coming, coming, something big coming. So at the middle of the piece, we got that, this real yeah, that dynamic. Was, yeah. Talk about the, the rehearsals, <laughs> the putting together of that. Well, that, that part actually wasn't so difficult, you know. We, I just de start this, um, decided to insert that part in the middle of the tune because I know we needed that somewhere along. We didn't have that for the prelims and we had that for the North Zone. No, we know. insert that for the semifinals. Mm -hmm. And it we, certainly worked that night. Yeah, it worked <laughs> that night. And, um, but, that, but I don't think it was that difficult to really create. Uh -huh. You know, the other parts, like the aftershocks, because you see, we're going along the, in the music and we had to put the aftershocks inside the music. Correct, yes. You because see? now we were getting the effect of the pan saying earthquake yeah. and then hearing the rumble yeah. in between the music. Right. Yeah. And that, that is what you're saying called for a little bit of uh, work. Yeah, that called for more work because it's with the music. All Stars as a band has always seemed to have this ability when they go into a jam session to really liven up an audience. And what are some of the techniques that the band uses, or maybe you in particular use, to, to, to give us that kind of a driving feel of, of when All Stars really goes into a jam session? Well, I really try to take, take over where um, Smooth left off. Uh, but I, I shouldn't really put it that way, but I, the band have a style, and I try to to tailor my arrangement to suit that style too. I don't try to put like myself alone in the arrangement. I guess the only way I could do that is like if I have my own band, but I come and I meet the band in a, in a certain position and I try to lift the band up. So I try to take out points or the, um, what I should say. When Things that the band is traditional yeah, traditional, for. yeah, you know, mm -hmm. like, like lift, a lot of lifts and things I might use. Mm -hmm. um, and it, uh, well, actually I, what I did too, like if I try out a part, well the guys will come, come home by me and learn the music and stuff. And uh, uh, sometimes I might try out a part in them and see how they react to it. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> well, I guess it's three years now I'm doing this, so I get accustomed to their, their style. Yeah. Uh, see how they react to certain things. So. I even noticed a little zook was used in the latter part of the tune, which I suppose is relevant to the Latin flavor. To the Latin, yeah, because it had a lot of Latin, Latin idioms in there. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, well, the last part that you went into, which I would call maybe your coda before your, your, your ending, um, I got the impression that you almost like you were going to, to change the key, or you did change the key, and then you suddenly came to an end. What happened? At oh, the we end? changed the key three times there. Coming down One the after end, the other, yes, yeah. change, yes. Yeah, said, that was like where a sort is of this a, going? You know? Yeah, it was a sort of like a, um, well, you call it a coda, but the guys in the band call it a dub. <laughs> so, <laughs> because it seems as though that music is popular, so yeah. they, they, they like that part, you know. So I had to change twice, and then somebody suggested change it a third time. Mm -hmm. So I just lift it up again. Yeah, but it had a fantastic effect in 
And the ending came as a total surprise because I thought you were going into some new movement or something. Oh, like that's that. because of the, probably the trill. We had a dissonant trill at the end. Yes. You know, all sorts of bands, again, they liked the trill. Mm -hmm. It's one of the only bands I see that use the trills the effectively. Trill. Well, like the last band I remember style. using a lot of trills was Pan Am North Stars. It oh, was a yeah. band that loved that. Yeah, that was a good band, yeah. Mm. yeah. But that worked at the end. Yeah. A fabulous ending, kept the interest of the crowd. Welcome back to the live portion of Calypso Showcase and we, Eddie and I just trading notes as we're watching the, the video clip there and perhaps you can share some of your impressions uh, looking back at um, how we dissected your no, piece that here. was very out of comedian that editing. Mm. Very good editing. Thank you. Well, um, what I'd like to, to go back to is how did you st first start arranging for the band Trinidad All Stars? Oh. Um, there's a friend of mine that I grew up with together a long time ago. His name is... Cecil James, we call him Jimmo. He's Sergeant James from the Uchera and the Bigger Regiment. He was the former captain of Tokyo and the former captain of Cinco. He came to New York in 1990 or somewhere around that and asked me to come back down and arrange China and the Panama tune. Maybe he was following up my arranging work in the studio and I probably believe I could do a Panama tune or do justice to him. And I came back, he invited me to come back down and I came home in 1992 and did. The Duke tune and the Dust and then this one. That was Tell me something. Um, in terms of the all the tunes that were around this year for 1994, did you have a chance to to listen to any other tune and what were you attracted to? Well, I was attracted to. Um, I was attracted to the Fire too, also. Fire coming down. Yes. But there's a tune that I produced by a, a guy called Parry Paul called Play on Mr. Pan Man. I didn't think I get any much airplay, but it's, it's a very good tune. Um, I offered the guys a chance to work at it, but they, were, I don't, they wasn't interested in it because they didn't get much airplay. Mm -hmm. Play Mr. Pan Man. Yeah, it's not the first tune, the next guy. No, 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 I, I, called, in fact, I, yeah. I know the tune. Now. I think it's by a guy called Lyrics or something like that. No, um, it's Parry Paul composed the tune, and Roger George from Charlie Jude sing it. Roger George sang it? Yeah. yeah. Now, this Parry Paul is a friend of mine from Takarigo. Hey, we have a music school where we teach kids. Mm -hmm. for, it's for free for community service to the Takarigo, where we teach music and theory and pan, a pan school. So that was a tune that I thought would well, get a player because my bands might have played. But I was also interested in the first two tunes, too. Play Mr. Pan is playing. Yeah, he always comes with some girls. Well, since he and Merchant Colors had collaborated, they have yeah, a pan thing going here. Yeah. Pan and the Pan is very pan. good, too, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, who else? Are they, uh, what else they had out there? Let me see. Well, they probably had a couple more. For a pan, yeah. one. And yeah. one of the things that um, you know I keep saying is that the, the, the Calypsonians need to get their work to the, the pan arrangers much earlier so much that they earlier. can have sit down and take the time to assess oh, them. As I was talking about, I think I think um, Sugar Allos had a good pan song too, I think. The yeah, well, the one on Kitchener. The, yeah. A very I good tune too. I was in studio when the song was, um, I was put on the vocals, the, the lead vocal for it that was around there. So. And I thought it was a good pan tune. I kind of think less than actually played the pan on that record. Right. Yeah. A tribute to Lord Kitchener. To Lord Kitchener, yeah. If you had to tell the viewers in listening to the entire pan ar arrangement from beginning to end, what to listen for, how to listen to 10 minutes of music, because it's a lot to digest, what would you tell them? Well, I really don't, I wouldn't like to tell the viewers who actually how to listen to the music. Eh? The most I could um, try and encourage them to do is to relax and enjoy the music, mm -hmm. like what they're accustomed to doing, you know? But um, that, 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 I think we should leave that for like for lectures and schools and things like that. <laughs> you know, because to I, learn I, how to I, music appreciation. Yeah, music appreciation, yeah. All right, yeah. we want to take another commercial break and then we're mm -hmm. going to let the audience listen to the entire Time. panorama mm -hmm. arrangement without all the breaks that we've had in the video clip. A bit. Uh, we wouldn't take a break, we'll just go straight into the tune. But perhaps you can 
Just give me probably in 30 seconds, if you had to describe your arrangement from the beginning to end, how would you describe it? Well, I describe it as um, I mentioned before, I describe it as contemporary descriptive music, you know, mm -hmm. because it has got a lot of contemporary stuff in there, um, not only classic and jazz, but a combination of pop and different things, you know, as being as a person exposed to all sorts of music in America, you know, I, I guess I can, it, that kind of those influences can leave me, you know, so that's that's what you contemporary think. descriptive, yeah. Well, here's the Neil and Massey Trinidad All Stars with your tune Pan Earthquake as composed by the Lord Kitchener, sung by the Lord Kitchener. This is a tune that helped them to place second in the 1994 National Panorama. Let's take in the entire performance by the Trinidad All Stars. <laughs>
Welcome back to Calypso Showcase. The full performance there by the Trinidad All-Stars, sponsored by Neil and Massey. Eric Wallace, congratulations on a fine arrangement. Thank you. We don't have much more time. We've really gone into your, your piece in extensively. Uh, perhaps you have some final words you might want to say. Well, I'd like to thank um, some, a couple of people in the band. First of all, I'd like to thank the sponsors for providing us with those drums. Because there's those drums that they lift us, lift the good quick feet, you know? I'd like to thank uh, a couple of people in the band, like um, the MP, Eddie Hart, for giving us motivation. Um, mm -hmm. um, Barry Bartholomew, Tony Guy, and Telly Mac. Mm. And I'd also like to thank the band for going with me. That's final Saturday morning after 7 o'clock in the morning. That's the time we finish. Thank you very much, Eddie, for gracing Thanks us so with your presence. Okay. And we just want to say, There'll be a lot more showcase to come. The next two uh, programs, however, will be preempted because of the cricket. Um, but later down in April, we hope to bring you the tribute to the mighty spoiler. We go out now with Kitchener with his pan quake. <laughs> A man say look trouble, another earthquake is only December, I repair the juba. Now all the dreams seem to shatter, ceiling. 